Welcome to Science Hutch. I'm Hutch, this is science, and our science today is all about AP Physics 1 investigation number five from the College Board. This investigation is all about impulse and momentum. You're gonna be investigating those two things uh, using some carts and tracks. So let's kind of get into a little bit of a, a background here. You know, Newton's third law of motion, uh, everybody kind of says uh, that every force has an equal and opposite reaction force. That was never stated that way by Isaac Newton. It was actually stated in terms of impulse and momentum. That when one object puts an impulse on another object, it gets the same impulse back on itself. Um, real world applications mentioned by the college board here include things like in sports things, uh, we have boxing and karate. And so if you do a, a quick jab in, uh, in boxing or karate, you're going to apply a large force over a small amount of time. Um, but you might get the same effect with a follow through punch where you're going to be in contact with their face or whatever you're punching for a longer amount of time and that's going to use less force in order to get the same change in momentum. Uh, other examples are like in tennis. You know in tennis uh, when a ball hits the racket they experience the same force but with different effects because the racket and the ball have different amounts of mass. And the same thing happens in baseball as well, to the bat and the ball. Car safety is mentioned, seat belts, airbags, crumple zones. What's the point of them? Well, they make you safer in the car because if the car is gonna have an impact, a collision, uh, they're going to extend the time of that impact so that'll drop the force for the exact same change in momentum. You have no control over the change in momentum, which we also call impulse. The car is going to stop, it had momentum, it's gonna not have momentum, momentum afterwards, but you can help people survive by using less force to accomplish that over a longer amount of time. And that's what these whole cans do. I can punch stuff all day long and it doesn't hurt because as they cushion in, they extend the time of impact, which drops the amount of force that I actually uh, get on my hands. If you make a graph of force versus time and you take the area underneath the curve of that graph, then you're going to find the change in momentum on an object. Especially if this is just the force on one object, you're going to actually be able to find the change in velocity on that object as well. Hey, let's go take a look in the lab and see what kind of equipment we're going to be playing with today. All right. Hey, Norm. Thanks for helping me out today. Hey everybody, I'm Science Hutch. This is Science Norm. We're going to show you how to do this three-part investigation into impulse and momentum. Um, we have two carts here, two sets of tracks just to make things a little bit um, faster for the video, but you'll really only need one track for the entire experiment. Part one is going to be a qualitative experiment in which you're going to be feeling the force of impact on a cart and you're going to want to vary two things during that experiment. Um, first of all, let's introduce some of the equipment. So these are a cart and track set uh, from Vernier and uh, Norm, do you mind to go ahead and this is what we call the long box, what Norm is opening here. It contains two Two of these beautiful shiny green vernier carts and uh, yeah and I call them a sister set because they are set up with magnets inside one side and velcro on the other side so that you can create different kinds of collisions we're gonna see that in part two in just a second that one also comes with a plunger here it's spring-loaded so that you can create the explosion event in part three of this experiment. We're gonna put the spring-loaded cart back in the box for now, thank you Norm. And we're gonna take just one cart for the part one and you're gonna do little crash tests. If you're, if you're high tech and you're fancy, uh, Norm, do you mind to show them that little box there? This is a dual range force sensor for also from Vernier. And what I've done is I've taken one of these dual range force sensors and I've put a spring attachment onto it and then it is attached to the track here with this dynamic track bracket. Um, all these are available from Vernier. And so what this is gonna do is we're gonna visually see the compression in a spring, which is gonna represent how much force we're seeing during an impact. We're gonna call that the stopping force of the impact. If you don't have one of these available, you can just kind of crash it into your hand and sense that force. You don't want to be too extreme with this thing because the biggest danger, there's not really a lot of safety uh, concerns in this experiment, but you want to watch out for your equipment. That's the biggest danger to your equipment. Okay, so part one, you want to do some qualitative evaluation where you're crashing a cart. You want to vary the mass on the cart. So we have a mass set here. We can put 500 grams on it. This cart itself is 500 grams. So I've effectively doubled, effectively doubled the mass of the cart. Right, Norm? Yeah. 
So you want to see, like, try to put that mass at the same speed, do a control run, get a feel for the force of the control run, and then do a run with more mass at the same speed as the control, and then do a run with more velocity, but the same mass as the control, and just get a, a qualitative feel for how much force we're seeing. That's part one. Typically, the College Board recommends that you should only use about 10 minutes for part one, so it goes by fast, and you gotta be focused. Part two is gonna be more intense. You're gonna need some more equipment. We have these things called photo gates. They break a, there's a beam that they create right here. You break that beam um, to, uh, that's the photo gate, a gate of photons, a laser beam there. And then that gets read by this thing. It's called a LabQuest 2. Um, this is also from Vernier. These are all from Vernier here. These get plugged in to your LabQuest, and then you can read on a data table screen, you can read all kinds of stuff. For part two of your investigation, you're going quantitative, and for that part, you're going to be wanting to measure speeds before and after collisions. You're gonna create four different events. Now, it's up to you what these events look like, but if you know about elastic and inelastic collisions already, you should try to create at least one of each out of your four events. Events. Inside our long boxes, we're also going to find the thing we're going to use to break the beam in the photo gate, because you can see the car is not actually going through the beam right now. Norm, do you mind to open up the long box there and look for the little metal cylinders? Perfect mundo. Norm, I'm going to give you this one, and you're going to situate this in here for this car, and I'm going to do the other one. Thanks, buddy. So this is how this works. At one end of the car, you're going to find a little openings here. You're going to take in the middle opening, uh, open up this screw, slide this in. And it's up to you whether you want this in the middle of the car at one end or the other, and then you can tighten it to put it back there. That's gonna fly right through your photo gate beam and break that. You're gonna wanna find the diameter of this and tell that to the LabQuest before you begin. So the LabQuest knows the distance that has been traveling through here, that's the diameter, and it's gonna read the time that the beam was broken. It's gonna be able to give you distance over time. That's gonna give you those velocities you're looking for. Some events you could create, you could situate these so that in here there's magnets facing each other right now. They could be north facing north so they repel. So we can create elastic collisions where there's no loss of kinetic energy because we don't lose any energy to sound or Oh, see, it's a little too much, a little too much. You want to have the soft touch for this. Now you flip it around and you can create inelastic collisions with your Velcro sides. They will stick together and now the two have become one. We just married those carts. Isn't that beautiful and wonderful? You can also put both of them in motion before and you can see what happens afterwards. You're gonna have about 20 minutes in part three to, an, to experiment with an explosion, which is really fun. So take your car, turn it around so that you have this plunger side facing you, and then set that facing into its sister car. And then you wanna have kind of like a little, a nice little tip tap on this thing. Tap it, tap it, tap it, tap. And it's much easier if you use something like a pen or maybe even just your cell phone and just tap that little thing on the top to release the plunger and then have your lab um, your lab friends your team to kind of catch those cars so they don't crash into stuff on the sides so there are optional equipment that you could use to experiment with that the college board mentions is a motion detector that's the box for the motion detector this is the motion detector. You're gonna to wanna to set the switch inside for the cart and track. That's just gonna give you a tighter beam of ultrasound, and that's gonna echo off of your cars constantly coming back about 30 times every second, or you can actually change your sample rate on your LabQuest. This also gets attached to your LabQuest, and your LabQuest will give you a nice motion graph here. That's an option for you, but remember, it can only read the closest thing to it. So if you're gonna use it, you might wanna take off the photo gate because the photo gate might interrupt the beam if the car gets past it, and you're not gonna read the other car on the other side of it. Okay, Norm, have I missed anything? Okay, well thanks for watching. This has been Science Hutch. I'm Science Hutch, this is Science Norm, and this was Science. You have yourself a good day. Keep on physicsing.